And since more than a week has passed since I bought my new phone, I thought I would combine my lunch at Borderline with talking about this new phone. What I like about it, perhaps what I don't like about it, and how the whole experience has gone upgrading from my five-year-old five-inch baby phone to this modern 2020 6.7 inch behemoth that has been uh, quite a change for me I can tell you that as is common with a review like this well I won't even call this a review all I'm talking about is my experience with the phone and this is a very narrow experience as well because as I said I bought the phone for video editing that was pretty much loud uh, loud motorcycle that was pretty much the main reason if not the only reason that I wanted to upgrade to the uh, 2020 phone and apparently editing video on a phone is quite rare I watched dozens of YouTube video reviews of this phone and no one ever 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 mentioned editing a video on a phone they talk about the camera the video camera how it works for gaming everything like that but no one ever tested any of these phones as they relate to running a video editing app like kinemaster or Power Director, or Adobe Premiere Rush, Filmora Go, any of these programs. So I was just going on blind faith that if my five-year-old phones with 600 series Snapdragon processors can run Power Director no problem, then surely a 2020 phone with a 700 series uh, chipset would be able to do the same thing no problem. So I didn't really worry about it that much. And I just bought the phone, assuming that everything would go smoothly as far as the video editing goes. Turns out that is not entirely true and that has not turned out to be the case, but I'll get to that in a minute. First, let's talk about all the good. And there's a lot of good for me personally, certainly going from a five-year-old phone with a five-inch screen to a modern phone with a nearly seven-inch screen is a big jump. And that increase in screen size is uh, amazing for editing video. Just having that all that screen real estate makes editing video so much easier. The whole process is smoother. Uh, it's an absolute delight to be editing video on such a large screen. And all the features that the phone comes with are, are just a lot of fun. Um, the side mounted fingerprint scanner, face unlock, just the brightness, sharpness, and overall quality of the screen is a huge improvement over my old phone. Ah. Uh, I could just go on and on. The camera is better, clearly much, much better, both in terms of photos and videos. Anything you want to point at that a phone is supposed to be able to do, this phone does it much better than my old phone. So buying this new phone now in 2020, my instant reaction is, well, why did I keep using a 2015 phone for so long? I should have upgraded much sooner. Having said all of that, I'm a bit sad to have to say that the one area where this phone has let me down is the one area that I depended on the most, and that's video editing. It's such a strange thing, and I'll get into this in a lot more detail later. I'll actually show you uh, what I'm talking about, because the problems I've encountered have nothing to do with it, the phone's ability to process video or anything like that. It has more than enough horsepower to do that. 
going to duck down a side street where it's a bit quieter just for a minute or two. The problem is a large amount of glitchiness. It's just glitchy. And it's not glitchy for anything else. Everything I do on the phone just happens the way it's supposed to happen. Every app runs smoothly, everything works perfectly, except for video editing apps. Those are the one thing that this phone is struggling with. Uh, I'll start with the biggest problem or the, the weirdest problem, and that is every video file, keep up with me here, every video file that I copy from my GoPro to the SD card on this new phone shows up as an unsupported format. So I go out wandering around, I come back with 20 or 30 video clips, I copy them to the phone, I open up uh, a power director to edit the video to put it together, I open the folder where I put all these video files from my GoPro, and all of them just have a big gray box with a question mark on them. And the phone and power director tells me there's something wrong with these video files. They are either corrupt or in an unsupported format, and there's nothing we can do with them. And I'm here to tell you that's not true because I can play them just fine as video files. Every other app on my phone can open them and play them and manipulate them. Only a video editing app like PowerDirector and KineMaster and Familiar Go and every other app I tested cannot open these files. They all come out as unsupported. And trust me, I've done all the tests imaginable. I took those same files, copied them to my old Xiaomi from 2015. No problems there. They do not come up as unsupported format. PowerDirector can open those files, process them, edit them, do whatever they want. Even my ancient Motorola can do it. There's no issue with the files. The files from the GoPro are the same as they've ever been, and they are perfectly valid and perfectly good. So why they come up as unsupported only on this Redmi Note 9 Pro, I cannot tell you. And the mystery goes a bit deeper because in all my tests, what I discovered is that I can fix the problem temporarily uh, quite easily. So I've copied all these video files into a folder on my SD card, but if I copy those files to the phone's main storage, then they work. Then they just come up as regular MP4 files and uh, KineMaster and PowerDirector can, do, can copy them and, and process them just fine. Exact same files, if I copy them to the SD card, they're unsupported and I can't do anything with them. Copy the same files to the main storage of the phone, everything is fine and there's no issues or problems at all. So of course I suspected the SD card but I did everything you know, that one would normally do in that situation. I, of course, reformatted the SD card over and over again. There's nothing wrong with the card. I used four different micro SD cards of different brands, different capacities, reformatting each of them in turn. And every single micro SD card I put into that phone presented the same problem. And all the files came up as unsupported. But then, one more twist, the folder that I put those files into, if after I copy them into that folder, then I change the name of that folder by adding just one character or something, close it after renaming it, boom, all the files are just sitting there as normal MP4 files. They're only listed as unsupported when I first copy them into the folder on the SD card but then if I change the name of that folder or copy the files from that folder to a new folder, then they're suddenly readable and they're not corrupted anymore. So this is a complete mystery to me. And I, I suppose I can deal with it for the rest of my life by every single time I copy files to my folder, I have to go this, through this process of recopying them to a new folder or renaming the folder. And I've tried doing that but it's a bit of a hassle because I'll often add new video clips to that same folder. 
and the new clips in that folder will now come up as unsupported. And the only way to deal with that is to again rename the folder. But when I rename the folder, all the video projects that I use those files in will now fail because I've changed the location of the video file and PowerDirector can't find them anymore. See what I mean? I, I, so I can only use a folder one time for the initial video clips. And then every time I want to add even one more video file from some other source or from GoPro, I have to keep making a new folder, rename that folder. One more video clip, I gotta make a new folder, rename. It just, the whole thing just spirals out of control. So I'm trying to fix this and I just have not been able to. I don't know if that made any sense at all, but I will give a visual demonstration of what I'm talking about uh, in, a, in a couple of minutes. That's one problem. The other problem, or another problem, is that the cursor, if you're using a mouse, or the playhead on the timeline of your video project, whatever you're, you know, you're using, the, the cursor or the playhead, its location jumps around all over the place. And it's not supposed to do that. So for example, if I want to insert music, I choose a point in the timeline, okay, insert song starting here. And I put my playhead on that point. Very simple process. But then I go up to open the music folder to get the song. And as soon as I click on the music folder, the playhead will jump far to the left or far to the right, and it just disappears. So if I don't notice this, and I position the editing point, I position the playhead where I want the song to go, then I go to the folder, click on the song and insert it. It doesn't insert where I put the cursor. It inserts the song somewhere else in the file, wherever, wherever the playhead ended up. And I have to go searching for it and then drag the song over to where I want it to, to go. And this is insane. This is absolutely ridiculous. No other phone does that. And it's a real problem. Plus, when this is a really weird one, when I go into my folder where I keep all of my music, the music is organized into different folders, of course. Country songs, Western, uh, techno, disco, pop, classical, whatever. When I click on a folder, say I want to get a pop song, I click on the pop song folder, it opens the piano solo folder it opens a different folder from the one I click on every single time. And again, I have no idea why, and it's just so weird. So I try, I want to get a pop song, and then I click on it, and I'm looking for pop songs, and I get really confused. It's like, these are all classical piano pieces. What are they doing in the pop song folder? And I realized I didn't open the pop song folder. For whatever reason, I click on the pop song folder, but it doesn't open that one it opens up piano solos or some other random folder. Very weird. And, yeah, there's an and, unfortunately. This, why does this stuff happen to me? I, I'm always telling these technical stories of woe, either in a YouTube video or to friends or to complete strangers. I just sort of grab people on the street. I get so frustrated and I start babbling at them and telling them these things that happened to me that never ever happened to anyone else. And I didn't do anything. I just bought the phone. I installed PowerDirector and all these things happen. And there's no reason why any of it should happen. The other thing that happens, and I'm assuming all these issues are related, is that inside PowerDirector, portions of the menu just randomly disappear. I'll be happily editing a video and then when I want to do something like play the video to review it, I go looking for the play button and it's gone. That whole square where all these control icons were located has just vanished. It's not there anymore. There's just an empty gray square. And the only way to bring them back is to close the video project, exit power director, reload the program, reopen the video project, and now the, now the full menu is back with all the controls. And I'm happily editing away, and then a few minutes later, 
some other part of the video controls is just gone. The menu system just vanishes. And a weird thing is, I learned that the controls are still there. There's like an empty square, a gray empty box. So you can't see anything, but if you click inside that box, you find that things happen. So the buttons are there on the screen, but they're covered up by this gray square and they're just not visible anymore. And the only way to bring them back is, as I said, close the project, edit, close the program, reopen the program, reload the project, and now all the menu controls are back. So there are other glitches, but I think those three big ones, that's, uh, that's enough, I think, to get across my point that as happy as I am with this phone overall, at the moment, it's a really frustrating experience to edit video on it. I'm using my old phone still. I have this brand new Cadillac, this Ferrari of a phone in my pocket, but I'm editing videos on my five-year-old uh, Xiaomi Redmi 4 because it works better than this new phone. So if somebody has a suggestion, <laughs> an easy fix, uh, I would love to hear it. I was, whoa, scared me. I was so frustrated with this phone that after a few days I went back to the store and I wanted to exchange it. I was going to say, okay, this is, I can tell I'm going to be fighting with this for months, if not years, and I don't want to deal with this. So can I exchange this phone? And I wanted to buy perhaps the Samsung Galaxy A71 which might have been the phone I should have bought in the first place. But of course, this is Thailand. Things don't work the same as they do back in uh, my home country and, and exchanges just are not possible. You, you can't exchange anything. You can't get refunds for anything. It's just, you bought it, it's yours. And uh, I pleaded my case at the, uh, at the store where I bought it. And my case kind of got went all the way up to the manager and the manager spoke. Well, he didn't really speak with me. Can't say I got much in the way of service from the manager. But uh, the manager was clearly, you know, get rid of this guy. We don't give exchanges. Exchanges are not possible. Just tell him that and get rid of him. Wasn't impressed with the manager at this place. Though my guy, Max, he was great. My clerk, uh, Max, was as good as before. But as friendly and uh, helpful as he was. He had to follow the store policy and no exchanges are possible. They didn't seem to even understand what I was talking about because I guess exchanging something is just not done in Thailand. That was the impression I got. So I think that's it. I think um, rant is over for now. And um, while I sit down and have lunch, after lunch maybe I'll open up the phone and I'll demonstrate a couple of these problems for those of you who are technically minded and might want to be curious what this actually looks like. So, yeah, I'll see if I can figure out uh, how to do that easily. Then you can uh, watch it or, uh, or not, as you please. Anyway, I'm outside of Borderline. Time to go in for lunch. Well, that was a lot of work talking about all the problems with my, my new phone. Oh, yeah, I have it here in my uh, pocket still. It's kind of weird on the GoPro, it constantly comes up as blue. It probably looks blue in the screen again, right? But it's actually green in real life. So there's something weird going on with the colors in the GoPro maybe, but that's, <laughs> that's we're not gonna get into that technical issue. You know, I've got one, uh, one frustrating piece of technology at a time. But man, look at this thing. Is there anything more beautiful in the whole world that you've ever seen? I've certainly never had anything quite like this before. It's a mid-range phone. So for all you people out there with flagship phones, you're wondering what it is I'm on about. But for someone like me, this is, this is quite, a, uh, quite a thing to hold in my hand and to use. It's just beautiful and, and wonderful in every respect. Just, <laughs> just when I try to do the one thing I bought it to do, which is run a video editing app like uh, PowerDirector or KineMaster. I don't care which one it runs, I, I'll, I'll use either app, but neither of them will operate smoothly on this device. But anyway, 
to reward myself for all that hard work uh, talking about my phone, I get the pleasure of ordering lunch. I won't go through the whole menu here. I've done that on previous videos, but this is the borderline tea garden where I'm sitting, an outdoor restaurant, and they specialize in uh, Burmese, traditional Burmese dishes here. And the whole place has a kind of cooperative, collective vibe. There's a handicraft store here, which is very nice. They have a lot of social events here. Organizations can kind of book it and they, they do things here. I've been here in the past where they had a whole big group of children in the corner with an artist and they're making art projects together. They, they do all kinds of interesting things here. In busy periods, you can come here and take courses in uh, cooking traditional Burmese food. Maybe you could even do it now if you wanted to make special arrangements. It's just that there are not very many uh, tourists going through town. And the menu here has uh, photographs of all the different dishes. And I will go through the menu now and uh, choose dishes for my lunch. Really looking forward to this. The order has been placed for a drink I ordered, banana mango shake. I actually went up to ask them, do you have mango? Because some, they may not have one fruit or another, or do you have banana? And she says, oh, banana mango, okay. So <laughs> quite often my orders get misunderstood everywhere in the world. And then I usually just say yes to whatever they say. I was going to have either a mango shake or a banana shake, but she suggested mango banana together. And I was like, that sounds pretty good to me. So that's what we're getting. And my favorite, the uh, Sean potato salad, which is up here in the corner, I think. I'm a big fan of potatoes. And then I tried to find something new that perhaps I haven't even made a video about, but I don't think there, there is anything. I think I've had everything on the menu, but I believe I've had the vegetable pakoras right here only one time when I came here to shoot a video. So I thought I would order the vegetable pakoras today. And that is seasonal vegetables fried in a light and tasty batter, served with lime ginger sauce, and is typically eaten with plain rice. And being such a dummy about food, if someone tells me what is typically done, that is what I do. So I also ordered a uh, one serving of rice to go along with the vegetable pakoras. So that is it, that is my lunch. And now I'm going to set up my phone to try and show you a couple of the things that I was talking about, mainly how when I add videos to the phone, they come up as unsupported. Probably 90% of people out there don't believe me and think I'm, I'm making a mistake, but I will, I will set up the phone <laughs> and I'll show you what happens every time and how just by changing the folder name, I can bring all the files back again. A very mysterious thing that I'm guessing has to do with the Xiaomi MIUI 12 operating system or interface, I guess it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a user interface more accurately. So I'm assuming there's a conflict between MIUI 12 and PowerDirector and between MIUI 12 and KineMaster and Filmora, Filmora Go and every other video editing app, because these glitches only show up when I try to do any kind of video editing. They don't appear anywhere else with any other app. So. It's almost like some tricky ghost is, is haunting me or something. And it knew that the one thing I wanted this phone to do was edit video. So they made very sure that the glitches affect that one thing, the one thing that Doug wants to do. Let's make that really, really complicated. So that's, that appears to be what has happened. All right, I'm gonna set it up. Just to keep this as controlled an experiment as possible. Let's take it all the way from the beginning. There's a micro SD card from the GoPro, contains a whole bunch of video clips from a long 13 or 14 kilometer walk that I took uh, yesterday. And I want to copy these files to my phone as normal. 
I put it inside this uh, SD card adapter as normal and it then goes into my memory card reader as normal and I take my OTG USB-C cable plug it into my phone my amazing new device and then I can start the process of copying the files to my phone let's turn this uh, around I'm actually quite used to doing this right now because I just shot or just finished editing an hour-long video about how I do all of this stuff so you have that to look forward to <laughs> anyway there is an icon here for disk that's the memory card from the GoPro this is the SD card in the phone it's a 128 gigabyte card and then there's the main storage for the phone so what we're going to do is just go into my GoPro video files and pick a file let's take this one here number 579 and I hit copy because I want to copy it to my phone and I go into my SD card and I would normally make a folder where I want to put all of my new uh, GoPro files and let's call this one glitch because that is what we are investigating so I have a new folder called glitch and I paste my GoPro file into that folder everything is going along swimmingly when I did this the first time I cannot tell you how excited I was doing this on my brand new Redmi Note 9 Pro I like saying Redmi Note 9 Pro as you can tell and there we are and as you can see we've got a perfectly normal mp4 video file there you can see the thumbnail with a little play arrow on it I'm just going to play this using VLC player just to show you that it is a real video file and there's nothing wrong I'm with it on this walk. I think I'm hitting south there it is so look how beautiful that side. is on my new there. screen it looks so amazing market, first of all. so there it is and then I'm going to follow that market road. nothing at all wrong with the video file so now we know we have this uh, oh, let's put it back into landscape the video file there in the folder glitch and now let's start editing the file because I want to edit it and put it on YouTube so I go to power director open the power director video editing app I want to open a new project 16 by 9 aspect ratio for YouTube and here we are and you can see the folder right there called glitch with the file inside it it actually has a nice thumbnail of that video right on the top but when you click on this look at that that's what you get it's a grayed out box with a question mark on it power director does not recognize this file and if I try to add it I get a message Oop. Well, now it's gone entirely and there's nothing I can do with power director at this point it's completely frozen and I'm unable to do anything and I have to back out go back in create a new project and let's try that again so there is my unsupported file and I get this media clips file format is not supported you had to read really fast but that's basically what it said so that's it but now let's back out of this completely and let's go to the original folder which we called glitch and let's change it change the name to the more appropriate glitches with an s because we are dealing with a lot of glitches not just one so I haven't changed the video file I haven't done anything all I did was change the name of the folder and now if the pattern holds I can create my new video project there's glitches with the same um, thumbnail on the front click on it and boom there's the file as a normal 
video file with no question mark, no grayed out boxes, and I should be able to add it to my timeline. Absolutely fine. There it is on my timeline, and I. I don't know where I'm going. On I'm this able to play it within Power Director. South of the city of Mesot, sort of out in. So there you go. <sighs> and that kind of drives me batty. Look at this. A brief intermission from the technology troubles of my life. Apparently this restless trickster ghost that makes my life of technology so interesting um, doesn't have any power over my food. So my lunch here at Borderline looks just as delicious as it always does. This is the uh, mango and banana smoothie, the two mixed together. Really thick, looks great. Nice. I say that all the time, don't I? As if I'm surprised every time something tastes good. But what struck me is that it's not overly uh, sweetened. In fact, it feels unsweetened at all, which is kind of nice in a way. All I get is the pure uh, fruit flavors. Yeah, it's very nice. And this is my Shan potato salad. Shan is the name of a state in uh, Myanmar, just across the border there. So uh, I guess this is a typical recipe from the Shan district of um, Myanmar. Shan potato salad. It has a really nice spicing, I think. Um, let's give this a try. Mm. I love that. And as I've mentioned in the past, my Dutch heritage inclines me towards uh, liking anything based on potatoes. And this has such a nice, strong potato flavor. Mm. With the spicing. So good. So good. Okay. Vegetable pakoras. Right now I have a memory of um, featuring this dish in a previous video. And I think I was, I said back then that I had no idea what any of the vegetables were. And that remains true to this day. So it's a little bit like a, uh, a grab bag. You just have to grab one. And uh, so we've got like a, a half moon shape right there. And comes with a uh, lovely uh, dipping sauce. So we dip. Inside, we have a vegetable. <laughs> and as to what vegetable it is, um, you'll have to, you'll never know because I will never know. But it is kind of a fun dish because every, everything you eat has a slightly different flavor, or different flavor, different shape. And then, uh, I think that's some kind of a squash, a slice of squash, I think. Mm. And since this is typically eaten with rice, at least that, that is what the menu told me, we're going to add some rice to the mix. So now we've got some long, long green vegetables here. We dip and we have it with some rice. Hmm. Very good. Very happy with uh, my lunch today. So <clears throat> that, that is what I'm going to have for lunch just now. And I'm going to uh, settle in and enjoy this uh, off camera. Once I clean off these plates, we're going to get back to the 
mysteries of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro and power director and see, uh, see if there's anything else there to talk about. Though I think I've pretty much gone through everything I really want to go through. I've shown how when you add videos to the SD card, they come up as unsupported. And yet, if you change the name of the folder, suddenly they are supported. And I don't know why. And there is the mystery of just glitches, of things just jumping around, screens changing, and entire sections of the control menu of PowerDirector vanishing for no reason at all. And the only way to get it back is to exit the program and then reinstall it. And then the menu comes back until the next time it disappears. So that's really basically it. So I don't know if I'll show anything more on the phone. I think I've shown everything I can show. But maybe there's a conclusion yet to come about the phone and about the food. So I'll let you go now and I'll join you later when my lunch is done. Lunch is done. That was very tasty. I feel a lot better now that I've uh, fed the body. And if I can fix the phone, I guess that would be like feeding the soul, feeding the uh, technological soul. Before I dive back into the video editing app side of glitches, I should say that there are other glitches on this phone. Um, yeah, kind of <laughs> makes me so sad to say that. For example, right now I have this file manager app open in uh, landscape and you're supposed to be able to turn the phone and the f screen would go into portrait mode right auto rotate from landscape to portrait and I can't see the screen right now but I'm guessing it is not rotating is it nope it just stays in landscape and there's nothing I can do about it I can sit here and wiggle this phone and put it in different directions I can turn it uh, upside down, I can do all kinds of things, but no matter what I do, it will stay locked in landscape and it will not auto-rotate to portrait. And when you are editing videos and doing what I do on a regular basis, you're doing this all the time because I'll be editing in PowerDirector in landscape mode and then I want to go get another file or get a song or a photograph or do something and I switch the phone into portrait mode and <sighs> like I cannot get it to go back into, into portrait. It's, it is stuck in landscape mode and that happens all the time. And after a couple of hours of fighting with this, trying to get it to auto rotate as my five-year-old phones do effortlessly, yeah, I start to go a bit nuts trying to use this phone. There's just something deeply glitchy about it in general. And that's another one of the, uh, one of the glitches I'd forgotten about until just now. And that one uh, kind of drives me crazy too. But I think this glitch is also related to PowerDirector and KineMaster because those apps by default go into landscape. So as soon as you open a file, the phone rotates into landscape and even though I've, I've closed PowerDirector, it's not open on the phone anymore, the phone still has the settings for PowerDirector locked into memory and even though I rotate it, it, it won't rotate on its own. It just won't do it. So that's another problem. I have one more thing to show you before I uh, quit with this topic and I just want to show you that this happens in KineMaster as well, it, you might, the obvious conclusion to come to is that there's something wrong with PowerDirector, but it's not PowerDirector because the exact same thing happens in KineMaster and every other video editing app that I've tried. I just want to demonstrate that quickly just for a second. All right, let's do more or less the same thing. I still have my memory card from the GoPro plugged in and starting right from the very beginning. I'm still stuck in landscape mode though. I can't get out of it unless I want to uh, shut everything down again. And let's grab a video file. Let's get a different one this time. There's a 578 and copy that. Oh no, I don't, I don't have to go there to copy it. 
over here. Copy. Now let's go to our SD card and create a folder. And let's, what shall we call this one? Um, keep talking about this technology ghost. So I will call this folder ghost. The trickster ghost that makes my life a misery. So there's the ghost folder and let's paste our video file into that folder. Exactly what we did with PowerDirector. Following the same steps, waiting for the video file to copy. And there it is. As you can see, MP4 file, got a thumbnail and a play button. Let's open it with VLC player, just to prove that it is in fact a video file. Lately. <laughs> That's me clearing my throat. <clears> throat> this may not work out. Bad voice this morning. <laughs> so there's the video file we're trying to edit and put onto YouTube. So let's get rid of that. And now let's go find Kinemaster. Where did Kinemaster go? Okay, there it is there. There's the icon for Kinemaster. Another video editing app that I've used in the past. And it wants me to sign up for Kinemaster Premium, of course. We're not gonna do that right now. This is the free version. And let's open up a new project, 16 by nine. And it has a slightly different layout from PowerDirector, but it's essentially the same thing. Here's a timeline down here, and here are all our folders. And where is the ghost folder? Where did you go? There it is there, ghost. And it has a thumbnail of that video. Let's click on it. And now let's try to add it to our, interestingly, you do not get the gray box with the question mark, but if I try to add it, unsupported file format even though it even displays the file properly, when I try to add it to KineMaster, unsupported, it doesn't know what to do with this file, just like PowerDirector. So let's back out of there and go back to our folder, Ghost. Let's rename the folder, rename. And I'm probably being plagued by multiple ghosts. So let's add an S. So that's all I did. I added one letter to the name of the folder, called it ghosts. Renamed successfully. I didn't even close KineMaster. Um, still even in the same project. And there's the file. And now let's try to add it. Boom, no problem. Now it adds it to the project without any issue at all. So, yeah, another example. And if I did this with five more video editing apps, the exact same thing would happen in every app. And as I said, it does not happen in uh, any other uh, program. So Lately, I've developed... So... Yeah, I don't know what else to tell you. That is the uh, series of glitches that I keep dealing with. The other ones are a bit more intermittent, so I can't really demonstrate them. The one where the menu systems just disappear at random. That usually happens at, at unusual times, and I can't make it happen. And the same thing uh, with the cursor jumping around the screen as I go to add music or add photos. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. I'm just leaving borderline. You can see it uh, behind me there. Assuming you can see anything because, whoa, sun is right behind me. And you might, whoa, <laughs> there's, these dogs, they get me every single time. I forget they're there. They do not like me one little bit. They certainly don't like this GoPro. Um, at this point, you might be wondering something like, uh, hey, Doug, uh, what was the point of that video? And I guess for me, there's two points to the video. One is it can offer some small amusement at the uh, troubles and travails of my life these days. But also, 
maybe someone out there has a suggestion for me. Is there some magical solution to these glitches I'm encountering? And as I said, I've experimented with a bunch of things. I've used a whole bunch of different apps. I've uninstalled, reinstalled everything. I've shut down and reopened. I've used multiple micro SD cards. Oh, I've done everything I can possibly think of. And a couple of people on the internet had solutions saying things like, if you're finding that your Xiaomi phone is glitchy, then you should go into the developer options and turn off MIUI optimization. And I looked into that, but when you go to do that, you get a pretty major warning from the system saying, are you sure you want to do this? Because if you do, uh, the system apps probably won't work anymore. So I'm like, well, I want the system apps to work. So I don't really dare do things like um, turn off deep developer settings in, in the program. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just fiddling around down there and I'm sure to make things even worse. And other people have suggested that maybe MIUI 12 is the problem and it's possible to revert to MIUI 11, which a lot of people say is more stable than MIUI 12. So I started looking for how to do that, but man, that involves all kinds of weird technical things that I don't understand, where you have to download something from a special website and then you have to flash flash clear the ROM on your phone and it's not like going to a menu and pushing a button. It's a technical procedure and I wouldn't know what I was doing. So in terms of a solution, I'm looking for something simpler than rooting the phone and then reprogramming it and learning how to write code and going back to university as a software engineer. I just want the thing to work. That's where I am right now with my phone adventures. Certainly not where I wanted to be, but it's where I am. And I'll end the video there. Who knows? Maybe I can again manifest from the universe a uh, overnight fix to this phone and I'll wake up in the morning and there has been an update from Xiaomi and everything is fixed. I have no idea. By the way, today is Sunday and tomorrow is Monday and that is a big day for me because it's November 30th and I return to immigration to find out whether I got a 60-day visa extension or not. So that will be my uh, adventure for tomorrow morning and I'm sure I will fire up the GoPro to record that event in all its glory. <laughs> See and see what happens. Until then, well, I'm shutting down and uh, I'll see you in the morning as I head off to immigration. It is Sunday afternoon here in Mesa, Thailand and I'm on my way to my favorite restaurant for lunch. And that restaurant, of course, is the Borderline Collective. And someone who uh, watches my videos on YouTube contacted Borderline and left some money there for me so that I could return and enjoy some of their uh, delicious food. So thank you very much to that viewer. You know uh, who you are and uh, I think, as always, I will have some Sean potato salad. That's my favorite dish. And we'll see what, uh, what else I have when I get there. <laughs> 